Inside Georgia Basketball with head coach Mark Fox is brought to you by AT&T. Eleven minutes to go in the half. Parker in the corner, dribbles away from Hornsby into the paint, hangs in the air, and as he's coming down, he shoots it up and in. Good. That was a nice move, Juwan. You know, Juwan's uh, offensive game has really picked up here the past couple of weeks. Juwan Parker may have tweaked an ankle or a knee or something. He's hobbling around a little bit, but he's still in the ball game. And I think his game's going to come out with three. No, Parker's going to come out. Well, we were playing at LSU. It was in January. I think it was like the second SEC game. And I went up for uh, to take a jump shot and I felt something pop. Initially, I came down and my leg started burning. And I was like, ooh, you know, maybe I pulled something or a muscle. So I tried to run it off. And after about three or four times back up the court, I guess the coaches noticed I was still limping. And uh, once they subbed me out, I could just tell something was wrong. I didn't know what. Juwan had a partial tear of his Achilles tendon. And um, as far as the treatments for it and the rehabs and all that go, you kind of treat it as a full-blown tear anyways. It was just sad because, you know, you hate to hear that you have to go under the knife. I mean, that's the worst thing you can hear as an athlete. You, you need surgery, like you have to have it. So it was definitely just one of fear. Juwan's injury was a uh... The first for me, I've never had anybody with an Achilles injury, so it was definitely an experience. Um, and it was a lot of, uh, to use the term, play it by ear, uh, because I, you know, it was what bothered him, what didn't bother him. And certain things bothered him on, on some weeks, and certain things bothered him on some days, and we just had to change and, and go with what worked. It's a daily basis where we're doing some uh, soft tissue work with him, uh, constantly stretching. Um, and just mobilization exercises that we do uh, every day with him because he, he doesn't get a day off. His days off, if he, if he takes a day off, is, he's going to tighten up and uh, feel like he's taking a step back. So important is to work on his single leg strength and his single leg balance and his core stability to make sure that his ankle and his knee uh, and his hips are all functioning properly and, and keeping that ankle mobile, that knee stable and that hip mobile to uh, provide uh, him uh, the best results that he could come back and play uh, efficiently and, and be effective again. Lots of weights, lots of uh, one leg calf raises, two leg calf raises. I probably have done a million calf raises in the last year and a half. But uh, just lots of weight lifting, getting my core strong, working on things like my hamstrings, because it's all of the, I didn't know this prior, but all this stuff is connected. So you take care of one part of your body, it affects another part. So just learning a lot about my body. It's hand in hand, myself and Matt, the trainer, I think it's so important. Uh, we're on the same page and we talk every day and understand uh, what the athlete's injury is and uh, what the treatment plan is and uh, what they're doing in their rehab so it doesn't affect what we're doing in the weight room and vice versa. We, we talk daily, you know, and you have to have that kind of relationship with your strength coach to make sure everyone's on the same page. And um, Coach Fox has been a great at uh, kind of keeping us in the loop with the, each other and um, making sure that we're on top of everything. Constant communication and being on the same page and understanding uh, where they are every step of the way and knowing when they're going to be fully released back into the weight room to integrate with the rest of the student athletes. I probably annoy Matt the most out of anyone. I'm always in the training room uh, getting stretched. You couldn't ask for a more positive person. Uh, Juwan's a, a great guy, great, great person to work with. You can't, uh, you, you can't complain about Juwan's personality and, and what he brings. He's got great charisma. He's got uh, a great spirit. Definitely comes from my parents. I mean, they're two of the hardest working people I know, my siblings, uh, and just my faith. I mean, you have to have hope. You have to be positive. I mean, nothing good happens when you have a negative mindset. So it's just about being positive and, you know, you got, everybody has to run their own race, so you have to be positive throughout it. When you're hurt and you're out for a year, uh, and you still show up every day to work out and, and are willing to do everything you can uh, around your injury and understand, okay, I have three healthy limbs, what else can I do? And he's you know, cheering on the other guys and being positive, uh, that's a great leader and that's a, it's a great teammate. 
The team's been great. I mean, they never made me feel like I wasn't part of the team, even during the red shirt year or when I first got hurt. Uh, they always let me know, like, I'm part of the team, I'm a member, I'm a brother. And so coming back, it was nothing changed. I mean, we did miss a beat, so it's been, they've been awesome. Jawan Parker back on the floor for the first time in well, almost two full years, Chuck, as uh, Parker uh, missed all of last season with an injury with the, uh, the after the uh, Achilles tear surgery, and uh, he is back and ready to go at guard. Gives it to Frazier. JJ down the middle, scoops it left. And a reverse lay oh, scooped by Jawan Parker. That was pretty. High in the air, Edwards got it, gave it to JJ up into the other end. High three, straight away good. JJ Frazier with a three pointer. Derek, one dribble into the paint, and he a high bank shot with a left hand. He cracks the glass straight away. Parker, Jawan drives, kick out to Jordan Harris, pump fake on the three, moves right, oh. and knocks it down the second time. Oh, welcome back, Jordan. We missed it. Oh, boy, we needed that. Puts it out front. Oh, J.J. with like steal. JJ Open down. And it's good with a left hand off the window. Oh, the Tigers want a timeout. Oh, yes, they do. Pop on the wing. Jada spins into the lane. Leaves it short. Derek doesn't leave it short. He hangs on the rim and then dunks it. And that's the end of the half. Well, Auburn 37, Georgia 30. Parker, Frazier, and Turtle Jackson to start the second half for the Dogs, who get the ball to start the second half. J.J. with a screen, finds a oh, open, hit wow. the deep three, 27-footer. Bounce feed right to Frazier, over to Turtle, set shot, three, go! Oh. Turtle with a three. Juwan feeds Ogbede, there's a powerful oh. three to Jamaru. Dogs with the ball. Frazier tries to tie it with a three. He does. JJ answers with a three. Well, listen to this crowd on senior night. The lower bowl almost full. They're on their feet. To nine of 18 on threes. Here's another one. Crump. Go! Right corner three right in front of our guys. with Parker, handoff Harper, deep three, right wing is no good, it's short, rebound chase, Georgia, clock runs out, oh win. my gosh, dogs win it, dogs win it, 79-78. Uh, it was amazing, I can't do nothing but smile, this is what we wanted, this is what we talked about, we knew we had to take care of business, we knew it was going to be a hard game, and this is what we had to do, we had to take care of business. Uh, knowing it's such a crucial game, you know, and, just definitely wanting to impact it any way I possibly can. And the best way I knew how, of course, was to try and get every single rebound and take the last box out. And I, I tried to do what I could. Obviously, in the second half, just really showed a lot of courage to, uh, to keep battling. And, and then our crowd got involved, and we were able to you know, make some three-point shots and take care of it, not turn it over, and got, us a, got a, a really good win. This segment of Inside Georgia Basketball is brought to you by AT&T.
Growing up a Georgia fan, my whole family went here. I had a grandfather that played football here. Um, just to show the age difference, I used to come and watch our coach Jonas Hayes play all the time with his brother Jarvis. So I've come to the games, came to football games my whole life. I'm just truly honored and blessed to be a part of this team, and I can't thank Coach Fox and the staff enough for giving me a chance. My favorite thing about Georgia is just being a part of um, something bigger than yourself, uh, playing for your home state, um, wearing the red and black is truly something special, and uh, representing being something that kids younger than you in the state of Georgia can look up to and that they can want to be a part of something like that too. Uh, I think one of the biggest things playing in the Southeastern Conference uh, with a lot of guys from Georgia being on this Georgia basketball team, um, I think it's important because you know the areas you're playing against and it gives you a little bit more pride and more of a connectedness with the other guys from Georgia that you're playing against. Um, I, it creates a special bond and more of a passion that you can lead from within with Georgia guys playing for the University of Georgia. The past 14 months have been, been pretty special to me. Um, getting the scholarship, I was, I was just honored and uh, privileged to be on this team and then when Coach Fox awarded me a scholarship, uh, I was truly humbled and blessed. It uh, really meant a lot to me and my family. Where's Brandon Young? Brandon Young. And, uh, Brandon, just in the front row, right there. They, they're you know, They can see. They can see over, over it. Uh, I, I wasn't gonna make any short jokes about Brandon. Um, you know, he's um, he grew up in a family that loves the University of Georgia, and he grew up much like Houston, bleeding red and black. You know, um, he, he really did. Uh, but what I love about BY, and I think our players would say the same thing, is Brandon Young epitomizes everything that a Georgia Bulldog should be. Now, he's a great student, he's a wonderful person, he is a terrific player, he is the best teammate, would everyone agree, the best teammate on this team? And so, because of all that, BY, I think we should just give you a scholarship tonight. And then this, this fall, getting the Joel Leaves Scholarship Award really meant a lot. Uh, it's, it's not easy balancing basketball and academics, and um, I take a lot of pride in both sides of those, and I was uh, just blessed to get the award. I think, I'd say, I think Athens has the best college campus in America, I think. Um, it's, got a, it's got a small town feel, but uh, you get to meet people from all over the place, and uh, the fans are really passionate in everything you do, and I think it's really a community. Um, with the local people and with the college students. And like I said, the small town atmosphere and location connectedness with the campus is a pretty special thing. JJ with a three, good! Ten seconds on the clock, Frazier rips a three from the left corner. JJ Frazier, 5'10", senior guard, averaging 16 and a half points. That goes up to 20 in league games. And he's second in the SEC in conference game and scoring with 20 points per contest. Also leads the SEC in steals. JJ Frazier from Glenville, Georgia, he is a senior. For me, it's, it's all about pride and representing the University of Georgia in the right way and representing our program in the right way. And I, and I think that as a, as a whole, we've done that. And, you know, from the likes of Marcus Thornton and, and Dante Williams and Kenny Gaines and Charles, man, we just want to follow in those footsteps and continue to make this program as good as we can possibly make it. And um, so far, I think we've done that. Um, I wasn't really highly recruited, um, you know, because I was small in stature. Um, but Coach Fox took a chance on me and saw something in me that no other coach really saw. And, you know, for me, it was the University of Georgia. It was from where I was from, and the home state team. So I was coming here regardless of whatever offer I had, and, you know, it worked out. Frazier, left-handed three, swish! Straight away three. Frazier pulls up on the right side, knocks down a soft two inside the arc. It means a lot, um, just because when, when you're from Georgia and you're winning, um, 
in your home state for the team that you grew up to want to play for, you know, it's just a different type of pride. Um, it's a different type of feeling um, because everybody knows that you're from Georgia and, and they respect you m way more because you stay home to try to help your team win. I mean, you know, it just hasn't been me. Um, I have a great coaching staff, I have great teammates, and at the end of the day, God has blessed me with the ability to, to do what I love. So I just try to work as hard as I can and learn as much as I can. And God has blessed me to be better um, each year, and, and Coach has put me, put me in positions where I can be most successful and help our team win. And that's what I try to take advantage of. We have to put in the work, and every day we have to play as hard as we can and practice as hard as we can. Um, but, you know, we have a good nucleus, a, a, guy, a group of guys that play with one another. And um, so we're excited to, to continue to work. As a leader, I just wanted to continue to lead the best way I, I know how and the best way I can. And just keep our guys to continue to work as hard as we can. Because each day, we have to go in with the mindset of, of playing as hard as we can to improve. And at the end of the day, if we give everything we got, and that will be good enough for me. Mayday. Moses Kingsley in the center circle, ready to jump. Joe Lindsay with the toss and the tap, controlled by the Razorbacks. Get up and in. Derek does. They count the basket and a foul on Arkansas. Rebound to Frazier. JJ down the middle of the floor, down the lane, layup. Oh, good with the left hand. JJ took it coast to coast. Basket by JJ Frazier. Minutes to go in the first half. Turtle spins on the right baseline, throws it up, good with the right hand. Well, that was a nice little spin move. JJ for three, good. JJ Frazier, he's got seven. All right, but I'm fouling. We gotta get some stop. JJ to the rim, scoop layup from the left side, good and a foul. Count the basket for Frazier. You know, we just we just um, have been kind of patching our team together the last two weeks, and found ways to win. And um, Arkansas is a very good club, and uh, we could not find a, a lineup that could both score and get stops and and um, give them credit. They've got a very good team, and um, and they played well. We we did, we certainly couldn't couldn't slow them down. You know, I thought I thought we started the second half poorly. Um, we got some we got four fouls in the first two minutes of the second half and so now you're worried about them getting in the one and one and and we just started the half poorly they took that momentum and ran with it yeah we just i mean this is this is probably statistically as bad as we've played defensively you know um and um you know we just we just didn't we just didn't defend like we like we need to defend to win and arkansas has a good offensive club and they took full advantage of it 